got out of our vehicles, and, and uh, I had her on the way here. I said, uh, have you talked to Danny this morning? Did you text him or call him or anything? And she said, no. I said, well, I didn't either. Good. So, you know, I said, he's probably thinking we forgot about him this morning. But anyway, we did. We just we talked about it earlier in the week. Decided we wanted to come here. And, and, and of course, you know, we wouldn't ever be here for Mother's Day with everything that was going on. And so it's really a blessing to be here today and get to meet the new pastor and, and uh, his wife. And I uh, hope you can talk to y'all a little bit later after church. But, uh, anyway, just like I say, it's good to be here. So here we go. And we have not practiced We ain't practiced <laughs>
rescheduled for the first week of August, August the 3rd through the 7th. So we're all looking forward to that. Be in prayer for Brother Kel George as he will be bringing our message. And pray that God will reach our community and see souls get saved and, and see our town get revived. As uh, Mr. Underwood said up here, this is a time we need to be praying now more than ever. A time we need to be drawn to God more than ever as a church, as a nation, and as a group of people. Praise the Lord. So be in prayer for revival. Uh, Brianna's bridal shower will be coming up in August. Uh, uh, details on that will come as we draw closer to that. So be in prayer for that. And, uh, we may be having a cleaning day for too long. I think we're getting ready to move in furniture for too much longer in the parsonage. But uh, we'll let you know here in a few more weeks. Uh, if you're able to help, we would sure appreciate your help in uh, cleaning the parsonage. But if nothing else, I think that's all the announcements, unless I have forgotten them. Anybody have an announcement or something they'd like to share? Prayer requests, remember all of our fathers, uh, remember our nation and its leaders.
we are here this morning. If you would, uh, we're going to look at two places this morning. So the first uh, place we'll be in is Genesis chapter 5, and then we'll go to Hebrews chapter 11. So we're going to start off in Genesis chapter 5, and then we'll go to Hebrews chapter 11. While you're turning there, uh, just wanted to say I really enjoyed uh, the Mother's Day sermon. The Lord put on my heart. And I remember when a uh, guy was putting that on my heart, I thought, man, that's going to be hard to top come Father's Day, Lord. That was a good sermon, but praise the Lord, God's good. I believe he gave me another good one. And uh, for the fathers today, uh, the mothers was great. Mothers have great faith. I remember it like it was yesterday. But uh, uh, the fathers this morning, the title of my sermon is Great Fathers Walk with God. Praise the Lord. Great Fathers Walk with God. And I want to show you a man this morning. The Bible talks a lot about, and the Bible uh, uh, speaks a lot of Enoch and puts him in high regards. And he was a father, a father to Methuselah. And uh, all Bible prophecy, or most of it, that I've studied comes through Genesis. And Enoch's life here in Genesis, the man who walked with God, he uh, portrays a Bible prophecy. God called him up because he was... Uh, walking with God, he was living, he pleased God, and because of that, God called him up. He didn't die. Notice in this chapter, in Genesis chapter 5, uh, look at the end of verse 4, or uh, my bad, verse 5. It says, and he died. Look at the end of uh, verse 11, and it says, and he died. Look at the end of uh, verse uh, 14, it says, and he died. And at the end of verse 17, and he died. All men, when we're born, we die. We die, we die because of sin, because of corruption. But notice here when we get to this man named Enoch. Enoch didn't die. Read with me. In chapter 5 and verse 22, it says, And Enoch walked with God, and after he begat Methuselah 300 years, he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and 5 years. Notice in verse 24. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Praise the Lord. Enoch did not die. You do not see those words. And he died at the end of Enoch's life because he walked with God, because he pleased God. And uh, that foretells the, the future church one day, that one day if we're walking with God, if we're living uh, not in sin but in the light that Christ has sh shown upon us, that when he calls us back, we, all, we too also will be called up with him. Now go with me in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Look at verse 5. It says, By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, Lord, we thank you this morning, Lord, for a time to be able to come, to be able to worship you. Lord, I pray, Lord, as we open your word, Lord, as we uh, come together, Lord, as a family, as a, a children, Lord, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ, Lord, that you'll just uh, lay these words out. Lord, just fill me up with your spirit. Lord, I pray that it'll be your words this morning and not mine. Lord, just cast my shell of a body out of the way. Lord, I pray this morning that we'll see your glory and see your word. Lord, that we'll take it and accept it and apply it to our hearts and our lives. Lord, that we'll go out of these doors being a, a witness and a testimony for you. Lord, that people can see Jesus in each and every one of us. Lord, I pray for this church. I pray for this community. Lord, I pray for our nation, Lord, as we go through uh, some crisis, Lord. Lord, that you'll uh, give our leaders the wisdom and understanding, Lord, that they need. Lord, thank you so much for your son, Jesus, and for all his grace and all his love that he's shown to me and to this world. Lord, I pray this morning, Lord, if someone doesn't know you, that they'll accept you, they'll accept that love and that grace before it's everlasting too late. In your blessed and holy name. Amen. 
So this morning here, uh, we see Enoch pleased God. Notice at the end of verse 5, it says that he pleased God. So a good father that walks with God will also please God. But notice, he says in verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we all know that we must have faith in God. And I believe a big part of our faith, a big part of a great father, is having fear in the Lord, having fear in God. That's a big problem we have in our nation. We've lost all morals. We've lost all virtue. And we forget where to place our fear. We no longer put our fear in God anymore. We put our fear in the things of this world and man and technology and jobs. And that's our security. That's where we think that take, or the things that we think that takes care of us. But God is the one who's in control. God is the one who takes care of me and you. Place your fear in him. A great father will have fear in God Almighty. Notice across the page, if you have a Schofield Bible, across the page in uh, chapter uh, 10 and verse 31, it says it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God. We need to know uh, this morning, my friend, if you are lost, if you are undone, if you don't know God as your Savior, my friend, you need to place your fear, place your faith in Him, because one day uh, God will hold judgment to your sins. God will hold judgment to this world. And that judgment is hell. That judgment is an eternity of death. My friend, it is a fearful thing to stand before God Almighty and not know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're going to have to stand in payment for your sins. So a great father has fear in God. The psalmist said, he said, uh, uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And uh, I think of fathers today the lack of wisdom and the lack of understanding because they don't seek God for that wisdom. They seek technology. They seek things of this world. They seek science. And they, they seek all these other things. But my friend, wisdom and understanding comes from God. Our leaders need to be on their knees seeking wisdom and understanding from God. Our fathers today, great fathers, need to be on their knees seeking wisdom from God. Praise the Lord. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And then I think of Jesus. When Jesus was here, he says, Fear not a man who can only destroy the body. He said, But fear the one who destroys body and soul. My friend, we need to put our fear in God today. As fathers, as Christians, as believers in Christ, your fear needs to go to God. It needs to belong to God. Not this world and not things in it. But it takes more than just fear. Notice in James, he says, the devil and his angels, they fear and tremble. My friend, fear is not enough to get you into heaven. But fear is the beginning step of faith. When you realize that you're a sinner, when you realize you fall short under God's presence, under God's glory, you realize that you need Satan. You realize you need Jesus Christ. And then when you believe on him, when you set Christ into your heart, you receive that faith. And through that faith, we please God. Through our fear in Him, through our walk in faith, we please God. Notice Enoch walked with God, and it pleased Him. My friend, there's a lot of fathers today who are not walking in the presence of God. We need fathers walking in God's presence. We need Christians walking in God's presence. You think when you come to church, you think, well, I hope I've come to worship. I hope I've come to walk in the presence of the Lord. We need to be in God's presence. We need to be walking with Him daily outside of this church. When we're at home, when we're at work, when we're at the grocery store, when we're with family and friends, we need to be in the presence of God. We need to be walking with Him continuously. Not when you just come to church on Sunday, but on a daily basis. And we'll get into that later. But that's our faith. That's our walk with God. And if we tend to please Him, if we tend to... Uh, 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 make God accept us is through our faith to be a great father. We need to have fear in God and have faith in Him. And notice in Hebrews 11, verse 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please Him, for he that cometh to God must believe that He is, and He and that He is a rewarder of them. So God rewards those who diligently walk with Him, who have fear in God, who seek the Lord in prayer, 
who come to church, who read their Bibles, who are in a God, godly example to their families. God will reward uh, those efforts. God will reward a godly man. Notice Enoch. One of his rewards is he didn't die. He got caught up. He was transcendent. Praise the Lord. Not everybody will receive that, that uh, reward, but we all have rewards that God gives to each and every one of us. I think of the reward of joy and happiness. I had someone come up to me not too long ago, a week or two ago. He said, man, every time I see you, you got a smile. Every time I see you, you're always laughing and happy. Why is that? And I said, man, because I have Jesus Christ. Let me tell you about Jesus if you haven't heard of him. And, and, uh, and that's what gives us true happiness, true joy. But the world knows not of that. They think joy comes through alcohol. Fathers today, they allow their homes and their lives to be tore apart through the, the joy that they, th they think they get through alcohol. And then drugs. There's a lot of fathers today seeking joy and pleasures through drugs. And it tears up the home and the family and the children. My friend, that's not true joy. That's not true happiness. And there's a lot of fathers today who look and seek for joy and happiness and nice things. Whether it's rides or clothes or cars or things of this world. The Bible says, love not the things of this world. For the love of the Father is not in you. My friend, joy and happiness don't come through things of this world. It don't come through pleasures of this world. It comes through Christ and Christ alone. True joy and true happiness comes from Him. My friend, that's a reward today. The world is full of anguish. The world is full of agony. They, they, they're running around to and fro, not knowing where to turn. They're fearful. They don't know where to put their fear in. They're putting it into the media. They're putting it into the, the, the riots and the crimes and all this nation falling apart. The world is running in fear. and They're losing their joy and their happiness. is turning to anger and bitterness and hate. My friend, true joy and true happiness comes from and then peace, a peace that passes all understanding. Jesus said when you come to know him, when, you, when Christ is made manifested in you as it was in Enoch, he said, I will give you yet another, a comforter, something to give you peace, something to let you know that I am with you and I won't leave you and I won't forsake you. Praise the Lord. It is a peace to know that my God is in control. It is a peace to know that God uh, will supply my every need if all I would do is ask. What a peace it is to know that God is the creator of all things. He's in politics. He's in this world. He's even got the hairs of my head counted. Praise the Lord. I serve an awesome God, a God that gives me peace like no other. This is a reward. This is fruitfulness that we bear as great fathers. Enoch. Bear forth great fruit to the Lord. He was rewarded for his uh, faith. He was rewarded for his walk with the Lord. A great father will receive these same rewards. He will have joy. He will have peace like no other. And then many more. God will supply your needs. God will show you. And I think the greatest thing is when you're a father who walks with God. When you're a father that truly gets on his knees and, and follows him in faith and in fear. God's going to give you a love that will match no other. A love that you can give to your spouse. A love that you can share to your children. My friend Christ can show you a love that this world knows not of. An agape love. A love that is unselfish. A love that is undeserving. A love that stands behind in action. A love that will prove itself. My friend, a father who walks with God, will be a this will be one of his rewards. He will have a love that only Christ can give. Praise the Lord. And he can share it with his family. He can share it with uh, his spouse. I think of Jesus when he said, I am the vine and you are the branches. And what do we do as branches? We bring forth the fruit. But without God, we couldn't bring forth those fruit. Because he said, without me, you are nothing. But when we bring forth that fruit, other people can partake of that fruit of that love, of that joy, of that peace. When they see it in fathers, fathers can share that with their family, with their children. When they see it in the lives of a Christian, the, the friends and the people that you're around, they see Christ working in you. And my friend, others can partake of those rewards, not just you and you alone. So be fruitful. A good father, a great father that has fear in God, he walks in his faith and he is fruitful in his ways because God will reward 
man who walks with him. And then notice, in Hebrews 11, the end of that verse, he says, a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. We have been in a uh, series uh, on Sunday nights on the diligent Christian. And I promise you, I didn't look for this. God's good like that. He just keeps bringing these things up. But as I was getting ready for this message, I seen that. And I thought, man, you know, a great father is a diligent seeker of the Lord. He's a diligent Christian. He has a desire to go above and beyond the, the most of this world. Enoch had a desire to walk with God above and beyond. My friend, that is faithfulness. That is another thing I want to talk about that Enoch had. He had faithfulness. Turn back in Genesis. Genesis 5. Notice in verse 21. Genesis chapter 5. In verse 21, it says, And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. Praise the Lord. So Enoch was uh, sixty-five here. Uh, yeah, sixty-five years. Enoch was sixty-five years when he had Methuselah. And after that, it says that he walked with God for another 300 years. Praise the Lord, the faithfulness that this man had. He didn't just walk with God on Sunday. He just didn't walk with God when times were good. He didn't walk with God when, when times were going his way. But he walked with God for 300 years. That's during the cold and that's during the hot. That's during the good days and the bad days. On Sundays and on Mondays. Monday through Friday. Praise the Lord. Enoch was faithful to God. For 300 years, he walked with God. A great father is going to have a faithful service. He's going to walk with God each and every day of his life, as Enoch did. And we need to have that faithfulness today. We need to have a desire to go above and beyond, to diligently seek the Lord through our Bible study, through our church going, through our prayer life. We need to be seeking the Lord to serve him. A great father will walk with the Lord, will diligently seek him. You know, as we grow in that Lord, or grow in our Lord and grow in our faith, you know, God begins to use us like no other. God can really work through each and every person who's willing to give their heart and their life to God. Notice that God also used Enoch, not only to foretell of the prophecy of the coming of Christ and when he will call up and rapture the church, he used Enoch in that representation, but he also allowed Enoch to be a prophet. He allowed Enoch to prophesy the coming of Christ. Turn with me in Jude. Jude, the book right before Revelation. Jude, there's only one chapter in this book. Jude, if you would look at verse 14. Give you just a few moments to turn. Jude in verse 14, it says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. This is the same Enoch I've been telling you about that walked and talked with God. This is the same Enoch that bare forth fruit for the Lord. This was the same Enoch who was faithful to God. And this Enoch, God allowed him, his eyes to be open to prophesy and see that there was a day coming. There was a day approaching when Christ will return. Christ will return with his saints. Praise the Lord. Enoch was in some bad times. Enoch was in the days of Noah. Don't think when you say, well, Enoch lived in a different time than I did. No, he didn't. Enoch lived in some very terrible times. Go back and read Genesis. Those times men's hearts were evil and continually wicked. Enoch was seeing the world come close to God's wrath and to his judgment. My friend, we're seeing that again. Today we see the world falling apart and evil continually being spread across the nation and across the world. But Enoch had a desire to walk with God. Enoch was still faithful with God. And Enoch looked for the day when the Lord would return. With 10,000 of his saints, praise the Lord, we are too. As Christians, we are too. As fathers, we need to look for the day when Christ will set this world in order. 
when Christ will grant peace. Praise the Lord. We need to be sharing that to our family, to our friends, to, our, to the lost ones of this world. My friend, faith is important. Putting your faith in God, there's no greater thing than you could do. I was witnessing to a girl this weekend. She had not put her faith in God, and I, I got to lead her to salvation. Praise the Lord. Through the Roman road. And uh, when she got done, she said, uh, when we got done praying, she prayed a simple prayer, Lord, I'm a sinner, Lord, please forgive me. And then we, we got done praying, and she said, is that it? Is that all it took? And I said, that's it, praise the Lord. I said, it's so simple, it's so easy that a child can do it. My friend, faith is not a hard thing. Walking with God is not a hard thing. You just have to be willing to do it. My friend, do you want a joy? Do you want a peace? Do you want a love that you can share to your family? Not just as fathers only, but as Christians. Are you diligently seeking Him each and every day? Are you walking with Him every day of your life? It's not a hard thing. It's very simple. It's very easy. My friend, just put your faith in Him. All you have to do is believe on Him. That He is Christ. He is come. He's lived and He's died. He rose from the grave for me and you. My friend, a good father will walk in all these ways. He will be faithful. He will be uh, fruitful. And uh, he will have fear in God. Praise the Lord. And through his faith. Do you have that this morning? Do you have the fear of God in you? My friend, put your faith in him before it's everlasting too late. As we stand, brother, as you come, will you put your faith in God this morning? Page 161.